Where's Jill? She's really lonely and out walking the cornfield again. Speaking of lonely, I was just watching television by myself, speaking to it as if it was another live human being. And I saw this commercial for this 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 new website called FarmersOnly.com. This is not a commercial, people. This is actually an observation. Um, it was basically showing, uh, you know, some a couple of ranchers, a couple of farm girls, and they just walk in the fields by themselves, you know, playing with their east finger, playing with each other. You know, you do that when you were a little kid. You do that little thing where you put your thumb and index finger together on both hands, and you kind of do the little, almost like there's an invisible tiny screw, you know. There's some poor woman walking through like these, uh, a bunch of corn, you know, and the cows are all concerned to the point they're actually speaking English to one one another, you know, about each of them going, how the hell are they going to meet each other? Do you think they will ever find this true love? Not hanging out with us all day. And then all of a sudden this wailing whore comes over the top and just starts singing, you'll never be lonely at farmersonly.com. You don't have- folks just don't get it so it's basically their facebook and you should go and look at it on youtube that's what you should do you shouldn't work you know where do you work what are you doing is it your dream or somebody else's you're just a cog in the wheel you know are they really going to notice if you stop working i'd say in a given week i probably only do about 15 minutes of real actual work if everybody else is working, why don't you just fucking, you know, tour to France. Just sort of draft behind a couple people's today, you know. Take a fucking Monday off. So anyways, check out this video. And you know what's the funniest thing about it is the comments underneath it. Is the amount of people who shit on, you know, just immediately thinking how dumb people are. Some folk will never raise gun, but then again, some folk will like clean us the slack jaw yokel. Hey, what's going on on this side? It's like these people grow our fucking food. Do you understand that? I'm sure they don't know where the rave is. You know, or who the most popular bands are, or how to get from fucking Brooklyn over to Staten Island. Oh, right? They don't know how to do that shit. They don't know how to put on a fucking shiny shirt, right? And go jump on the subway and go down to Wall Street and make sure old people eat dog food for the rest of their fucking lives. Yeah, they don't know how to do that. You know what they know how to do? They know how to make, they know how to make corn, right? Or plant it so it grows. They don't make it. God makes it. And he makes that fertile fucking country. You know, it's got to be really hard to catch herpes out there. You know what I mean? I mean, it must spread really fucking slowly. Are you Peter? Yeah. Uh, are you the gross lady who lives in the converted horse trailer? You don't have to be lonely at FarmersOnly.com It doesn't say whites only, but yeah. Is someone in here with us? Here's something for you. I don't believe in ghosts either. All right, we're just going to go right down the line of shit that I don't believe in. I don't believe in Jesus, and I don't believe in ghosts. But uh, I got to admit, there's some sort of paranormal shit been going on in my fucking uh, apartment lately. All right? We went on vacation. We came back, and all our forks are missing, except for two of them. <laughs> you know? And on two different occasions, I've been playing guitar. I get up out of my little fucking playpen area slash office. And uh, I walk in to talk to Nia. And then I come back and my my settings are different on my fucking amp. So uh, I think considering that the ghost stole my forks and is fucking with my amps, there's only one logical conclusion. That this spirit... Uh, died at a Scorpions concert. That's what happened, all right? And only heavy metal fans got that. Remember that? That song, There's No One Like You, and the guy had the forks in his eyes. Remember that shit? I think that that's what's going on. So I'm going to be on the next season of uh, Ghost Hunters. 
And I'm going to sit in there with some douchebag with a video camera yelling at the ghost. Is there a spooky ghost here? Look! What is that? What is that? I'm pretty sure that's their television! Oh, man, I am really scared. You have exactly four minutes to show yourself. You ever see that? Have I talked about that? How ridiculous that fucking show Ghost Hunters is? Those fucking idiots sit around yelling at the... They always... Somehow, first of all, they always know the ghost's name. And they'll just be sitting there yelling at the ghost. Like threatening. Like threatening this spirit that evidently is, is hanging out in a kitchen for all eternity. You know? Maggie? We know you're here. All right? We're getting sick of this. You got four minutes to show yourself. Or we're packing up all our equipment. Right? What do you think Maggie's thinking? Well, do it. I don't give a fuck. This is the most entertaining shit ever. Sitting here frustrating you guys. I'll flick you in the ear. My little ghost fingers on the way up. <laughs> you guys believe in ghosts? Do you believe in that shit? I used to hunt, displace spiritual energies with your uncle. I'm sorry? Uh, uh, PK agents, revenants, uh, 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 like wraiths, wraiths, do you have any idea what I'm talking about? Uh, <laughs> that's okay, that's okay, I'll, I'll do this the easy way, ghosts. Arthur, I used to, I used to hunt ghosts with your uncle Cyrus. Goats? Ghosts! Ghosts, goddammit! He really loves it, huh? Yes. Yes, he does. How long has he had that thing? 15 years. So anyways, um, this advertising comes on right before this news story that I somehow missed. And um, it shows this guy out on a lake on a jet ski or something like that. And these two ladies are sitting on the bench, on the beach, I mean. And they go, uh, she goes, so... One of, the, one of the ladies says to the woman who's married to the guy in the jet ski, so does he still keep it in the driveway? And she's like, not anymore. Still keep it in the driveway? Mm. Nope. You know, and like now that it's like in storage, it was basically an advertising, advertisement for storage, right? So, of course, you know, these storage companies, they're basically advertising to fucking ladies out there because what, what, what do women do the second you get married to them? You know, they take over the fucking house and all your shit ends up out in the garage. And if there's anything that sits in the driveway, how long before they want you to sell it? Whoa, 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 honey, what are you doing? Just getting rid of some stuff from the garage. I wore this to the prom. I was a champion. My popcorn machine? This is who I am. You know what I mean? Do they give a fuck that it's the last fucking flame flickering in your heart? You know? Something you have a passion for, an old car you want to fix up, a fucking jet ski. Right? And this fucking woman is sitting there gloating. This guy's out on the lake having the fucking time of his life on this goddamn jet ski. She sees how much he enjoys it. Does she give a fuck? Nope. No, it's a fucking eyesore to her. I really don't understand how women have like that motherly thing. Where they're like these absolute angels, and at the same fucking time, they, they're they like these... I don't know what they are. What is the fucking word? It's not like a leech. They're like these... Uh, I don't know. What is that old thing where a cat, if a cat s sleeps on your chest, it steals your life breath or something like that? Or is that when you hold the milk in front of your mouth and a fucking tapeworm comes out? I can't... There's something. There's some, something somewhere in there. Yeah, somewhere in there, there's, there's a reference that would have been funny three minutes ago. Sorry. Um, I just don't understand it. That's why Nia's this shit. Nia doesn't give a fuck. I got my drum stuff, my guitar stuff. She knows I'm a big kid, and she lets me have it. She's never said, oh, why don't you take your shit and put it in storage? You know? But all these fucking women, they show in these advertisings and all these fucking sitcoms and shit. I don't know. I just don't understand it. Why? Why? You know, the, at the end of the day, you know whose fault it is? It, it's the fucking guy in the jet ski. 
You know, when when she's sitting there breaking his fucking balls, there's there, there's 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 a great line that you can use when you're just sick of your woman. She's just crossed too many lines and she's on a fucking roll and she's going and another thing too, you got that jet ski out there, my mother's coming to town and they're taking up all that space, we need room for a car, but she's on a fucking roll. There's a great simple thing that you can say to them, you know, to make them stop. It's basically this. All right, all right, all right. That's what you do. And then you sit in the awkward silence. So you're yelling at me now? Yeah, I am. Why are you doing that? Because you're fucking annoying me. Don't curse at me. I'm not cursing at you. I'm cursing because I'm angry. It's my fucking jet ski. I enjoy it. I like going out in the, the fucking lake doing little loop de loos A little do si do whatever, whatever the fucking slang is on jet skis. I like doing it, okay? And I don't have to haul my ass all the way down to the fucking storage shed on the other side of town every time I feel like taking a lap around the lake. Why don't we put some of your fucking shoes down there? How about that? Some, no, no, shut up. So, well, you're talking when I'm talking. Then that, that's why that fucking word exists. You shut your face, lady. I will help you through this, but now you have to help me by saying goodbye. No, no, no. What do you have to say? Yes, goodbye. All right? My jet ski goes down to the fucking uh, storage center. So does some of your, your, uh, so do some of your shoes. Fucking only my jet ski, only my shit goes down there? What kind of fucking lopsided trade is this? Like I'm dismantling the team of my life? Go fuck yourself. You got to give somebody else too. Give somebody else up. There we go. See that? That's why, you know, I don't know if this, the, the, this kind of shit's going to cause me to live longer or die earlier. But literally, that's what a 14-second advertisement can fucking do to me. I get upset at this this hypothetical fucking relationship. And this guy who was on this just jet ski and goes into a green screen storage door. I don't know. If there's any women who still listen to this, can you can you please answer me like two things. What do you have against the guy you're with having fun without you? And two, what is it that guys do? What is the male equivalent to doing that because I know we balance each other out at this point. Okay. But I'm, I'm a guy. So I only see, you know, I'm like a Homer announcer. I only see the fucking offenses <laughs> that are on my side, you know, uh, that affect me. But it really just, just the way they said, no, he fucking he's down across the street. Oh, fuck you. You, he should have just revved that engine and just fucking ran right over her. Welcome to Blue Bananas, where bananas are our business, man. Just you in a banana this day. T-Bone, what are you doing here? Oh, your dad gave me this job. Michael realized that his father had even taken control of the banana stand. But he still had some unanswered questions, so he did a little detective work. You burned down the storage unit? Oh, most definitely. We're the most notorious fans in the league by far. Love us or hate us. What the fuck is I I I, I you know, don't even get me started with that shit. Those people who dress up for games, you know, like those stupid fucking Raider fans. What are they doing? They, do they understand how it went from one of the scariest places you could ever play to now looking? It, it looks like a musical. Looks like a Broadway musical. Like, I look at that, and all I, th I don't think intimidating. I think Phantom of the Opera. I really wish I knew some of that music. I'm sure a lot of the people in the black hole, and they stand up for the whole game. Do they? <laughs> hey, look, it's Darth Vader. Gee, I don't know if I can catch this football now. Raider Nation. You guys have the best fucking uniforms in all of football. You have the best logo. You have the baddest fucking tradition. And I don't know what you guys did to it. You need to get those sci-fi road warrior wannabes out of your stadium. And you got to go back to looking like the fucking hell's angels like you used to be. You know? Look, I'm not going to lie to you. I was actually going to go to the Patriots game up there with a buddy of mine. And he's like, dude, we're not wearing any Patriot shit. I go, fuck, fuck no. 
This is the West Coast. This shit isn't fun out here. People get stabbed. They get shot. You lose an eye. They're out of their fucking minds. All right, but I can tell you right now, Boba Fett is not doing that shit. Okay, or the guy with his fucking shoulder pads and his fake spikes coming out of it. I bought these shoulder pads from a local high school that was getting rid of them. Put a bunch of metal <laughs> spikes in them, and then every year I just kind of added on. Ah, oh, with your bandanas in your face makeup. You know what I love about those guys is I just want to see them, you know, when they're their alter ego, you know, like when they're in Burt Ward mode. This is my counterbalance right here. This is what relaxes me. And they're just waddling down the street going to work, you know. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, I think you guys need to go back to looking like fucking Ken Stabler and Jack Tatum. You know, you really should go back to that. And you know something? I'm actually being, I'm not being fair to Oakland Raider fans right now because I've been to a game up there and most of them look that way. And I actually talked to a couple of them and they fucking can't stand those guys who dress up like they're in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And typical TV, typical TV, who do they put on? Do they put on the real Raider fan who's just sitting there maybe with the Raider t-shirt or just dressing with the black t-shirt and looks like he'd slice your throat, you know, like a normal upstanding Raider fan looks like? No, who do they put on? Huh? They put on the guy dressed like the chef on the Muppet Show. <laughs> With a fake scar painted on his... Dude, at one point, they had some guy... I was watching the game, and this douchebag is just sitting there with his face painted, and he's like, Raiders, Raider Nation, we're gonna fuck... It's like, what happened to you? You know what happened? His balls dried up. There's, there's a point, like, they don't really talk about this in health class in high school. You get to a point where you're such a douchebag, and it's been so long since you actually laid down with a woman that your, your balls turn into sawdust, and uh, the estrogen levels go up, and the next thing you know, you, you go out and you buy a little vanity, and you're like, I just don't want to go to a football game. I want to go there in character. Five, six, seven, eight, Chenille. Um, oh, God help me the next time I go up to the Bay Area. Um, so anyway, so we, we were going to go to the game, and he, they he, and right off the bat, I'm like, dude, I'm not wearing any Pat shit. And, he, and the dude's like, yeah, absolutely not. I don't, you know, wh why would you do that to yourself? You know, why would you do it? Especially out on the West Coast where you get shot, stabbed, or you lose your fucking eye. So we came up with this great plan. I ended up not going up there, but I, I want to pass this on to my listeners here. This is a great thing that you can do, especially when you know your team's going to win. You go there dressed in the other team's colors, and then you act upset when your team is kicking the shit out of them. That's what I was going to do. I wasn't going to wear a Raiders thing. I was going to go there in a black, black thermal. And as Tom Brady was marching up and down the field, and everybody around me was going, Oh, what the fuck? I'd be like, yeah, come on. Watch, they're probably going to score again. Oh, great. Just what we needed. <laughs> you know what's funny? Nobody would have noticed. No one would ever stop and go, wait a minute. This guy looks like a fucking leprechaun. We don't have any redheads in, in fucking Oakland. This guy's a double agent. They never would have been able to figure it out. You know why? Because they would have had too much makeup in their eyes. Raider Nation has a special relationship with its team, and the heart of that relationship sits at the end zone known as the black hole. I know people don't get it, but I do love her. Objective sexuality is developing significant physical and emotional relationships with objects. Oh, you know what that creepy little analogy just reminded me of? I guess there's some fucking show out there where people are in love with inanimate objects. Like they actually like fuck a fence or a bridge. Or they want to, like, marry the Eiffel Tower? A year ago at a private ceremony, she married the Eiffel Tower, pleading eternal love to the iconic structure. Can somebody please tell me what that show is? I, I really want to watch that. Because I saw that one that was Fatal, fatal Attractions, where people have wild animals that they try to turn, <laughs> they try to turn into... Uh, they try to turn into pets. And th those people were just so fucking stupid of me that I couldn't watch the show. But I ended up hearing that that show was good because they, they get into the psychology of, of why somebody gets into that. 
we can't watch TV together because I like to watch the news and he likes the cartoons. All I, when I saw that guy with the buffalo walking around his house and every time he walked by him, that buffalo would slam him into the wall and he looked like Wayne Gretzky getting fucking checked by any sort of fucking normal-sized hockey player. And he'd just be like, Ugh, as he would walk by. No, nah, she's just playing. She's just playing. It was so fucking stupid, I, I couldn't watch it. So um, if anybody can tell me uh, what the name of that show is where people are like in love with like a door. You know, dude, how much alone time are you spending? I mean, I haven't even heard that in jail. Well, in solitary confinement, do you get in love with the walls? I bet you do at some point. At some point, you just, you just from just lack of human contact, you know, that man brain kicks in where you get visually stimulated. You got to get visually stimulated by something. And they would just be like... I bet it's like at some point during the day when the sun starts going down, right? And the shadow just hits the wall a certain way. And you just, there you are. There you are, you sweet little naughty, naughty piece of plaster. Huh? Where you been for the last 23 hours? Oh, shh, I don't want to hear it, you know? <laughs> so fucking creepy. I'm to spank you. You want to be spanked? Huh? You want me to spank you? Booty. Spank it, I'll spank you. Mm. Oh, God. Oh, my God. <clears throat> Tonight on Dateline, a wealthy doctor disappears, and his wife discovers that the man she married was a man she never knew. Wait a second. What is this fucking guy's name? Michael. Oh, man. I forget the guy's fucking name. God damn it. I was watching this thing on, uh, you know, my wife likes watching these fucking Dateline NBC shows. I, I, I literally think SNL did a sketch about how women like to watch like these murder shows, right? I'm going to watch a murder show, murder show. I'm going to watch a murder show. Netflix, Showtime, HBO, and Dayline. Murder show, murder show. I'm going to watch a murder show. YouTube, Hulu, that's my favorite thing to do. And she explained it to me. She goes, well, you know, as a woman, you know, you feel like you're not as strong. So you, you, you try to watch them and try to figure out what you would do in that situation. And I'm like, all right, that was a good answer. I don't know if I believe it, but, you know, it's a good answer. Um, so... She put on Dateline NBC, and this show was funny. She ended up falling asleep, and I actually I watched it to the end because this guy was such a piece of shit, I had to see him get caught. This guy went to, like, I don't know, USC or UCLA. University of Pennsylvania, Ivy League school, UCLA, great medical school, very hard to get into out of state. And I guess was a really good doctor. And he decided to uh, open a uh, one of those nose, ears, and throat, one of those guys, doctors. And he picked a town in Indiana that has a bunch of factories with horrible pollution. Weinberger picked Merrillville, Indiana, about an hour outside Chicago, to start his ear, nose, and throat practice for a very specific reason. Merrillville, Indiana, it's in the shadow of the steel mills of Indiana, and Chicago, the air quality is very bad. Um, I was like, all right, you know, this guy, location, location, location. And he just made like all of this money. And he was like flying around in private jets and had a yacht and all this. Along the way, Mark indulged them both with expensive toys like that yacht, chauffeured limos, even a jet. And I'm thinking like, wait, this guy's doing this off of being, an, you know, Nose ear, nose, ear, and throat doctor. That's what it is. The fuck's he making all of this money? And then he had all his state-of-the-art equipment. He built a new high-tech facility with diagnostic and surgical suites. And he was, like, doing, like, like 30-something surgeries a week. It was fucking insane. How many surgeries was he performing? On an average, within 15 to 22 a week. 15 to 22 surgeries, one man every week. Yes. 
And what he was doing was if you just came in, it didn't matter what your fucking problem was. He just said you needed sinus surgery. And he would just go in there and maybe he would do something. Maybe he wouldn't. He would just fiddle around inside your nose. Some people he would just fiddle around in their sinuses. You'd be done in a half an hour. He'd have no follow-up, and he'd give you a little saline solution, and that was it. About three weeks later, Phyllis went back for the surgery, which lasted all of 30 minutes. And I said, is the doctor going to come in and talk to us? And she said, oh, he doesn't see patients after the surgery. And one woman came in. She clearly had throat cancer, and he ignored it. And, um, I mean, she was a heavy smoker, so that was on her, but, like, he could have helped her be diagnosed early on, which led to this, you know, horrible quality of life or whatever. Her cancer would have been obvious to a first year medical student. Another one was this little girl who had like, ended up having a brain tumor. But because this fucking asshole went in there and did surgery, all this scar tissue, which I don't understand why they can't get through it. They could only get 10% of it. Fortunately, the kid lived. They said that there was significant amount of scar tissue in her nasal cavity. So Kayla's surgeons were able to remove only a small part of her tumor. They only got 10%. By the end of it, I'm like, they should fucking hang this guy by his fucking toes. Blah, 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 blah. So he goes on vacation, abandons his wife, and just fucking, you know, is a fugitive. Right? They end up catching the fucking guy like five years later. Back home, sensational news headlines scream the nose doctor had been nabbed at an alpine hideout in Italy. It had been five long years. Now he has all of these lawsuits. He's been stripped of his uh, medical license and all of that shit. And in the end of all of this, okay, guess what this guy gets? The first thing, they were going to give him two years. Back in Indiana, he faced hundreds of lawsuits and 22 federal charges of health care fraud that could land him in prison for up to 10 years. But Weinberger cut a deal and agreed to plead guilty if he was given four years in prison. Two years. It's just that classic fucking thing where, you know, white collar crime. It's fucking ridiculous. So... The doctor, the lawyer, whatever, they end up getting this guy. And they end up, I think he ended up getting like seven years. The judge sentenced Weinberger to seven years in federal prison. Or he did like seven years or something like that. And now he's out. Now he's trying to start this yoga thing, right? <laughs> he's going to be a yoga instructor. And he's such a lunatic. He's like, you know, people talk yoga about spirituality and all that. Who's kidding who? It's not about that. It's about looking hot so you can get some fucking ass. I mean, that's basically that's <laughs> what he reduced yoga to. He says people work out for two reasons. And if you guess to get healthy and feel better, nope. He says it's to get hot chicks and look great naked. Um, and he still goes around calling himself a doctor. It was so fucking upsetting. I actually looked up the be- the, some of the victims because I was going to try to go out there and do a benefit for him. Because one of the, the mother of the kid was going... Oh, you know, the the he wiped out my savings. People don't realize that he did much more than take my daughter's health, take her childhood. He wiped me out financially as well. He took my retirement. And now this guy, he's just like down in Miami doing like fucking yoga. It's a whole thing. It's just it was really it was just wasn't it wasn't satisfying on any level. Other than the fact they stopped him from doing that. Um. And the only time the guy owned up to, you know, I heard a lot of people, the only time he owned up to it was when he was staring, you know, at a jail sentence. So he just said the things that they knew he wanted them to say. Saying, quote, I'm sorry, I lied, I stole, I betrayed a sacred trust. Um, Just a complete narcissist, fucking sociopath and all of that shit, which is uh, the problem with those types of people is you're never going to get satisfaction. You're never going to get closure. You just have to walk away from them. That's kind of what it is. But a guy like that, they should have walked away as they closed the fucking jail cell. That guy should have gone to jail for fucking life. He should have got like two life sentences for what the fuck he did. To sit there and, and be 
performing surgery on people that don't even need surgery or it's not the proper surgery. I mean, but, you know, you get caught with like, uh, you know, a fucking uh, a fucking kilo of cocaine. You're going to jail for fucking life. And this fucking guy is sitting there rooting around at people's fucking noses. Right. There, I mean, there's a, a kid with the tumor that they could have got out and now they can't because of what the fuck you did. That's it. You're done. You don't get to go to Miami and do fucking yoga. <laughs> That's fucking annoying. Mark Weinberger is still calling himself a doctor. Sort of anyway. He's now yoga doc. Selling classes to turn you from a nerd to a ninja, from a zero to a superhero. Janair was concerned about being tossed away. Mark trading her in for a newer model, a younger model, a prettier model. Um... Oh, shit. You know, I really wanted to talk about this fucking thing with my wife. Um, we watch those true crime things when we go to bed. I don't know. She's into the shit, and I just, I've given in. I, I watch The Real Housewives of Atlanta now. Um, I can handle it now because that NeNe Leaks isn't on it because she used to just dominate everybody. She'd talk over all of them, and nobody seemed to have enough game to be able to hang with her. So it got boring. It was just like, well, she's going to win every argument. The fuck am I watching this shit for? This is just like, it's like Groundhog Day. So um, I like watching that one in The Real Housewives of New Jersey. Uh, You're my fucking father! You're my father! You're my fucking father! That shit is just funny to me. Um, Anyway... But we watched this one on, um, there was this guy, he married this woman and uh, they were together for like 20, 25 years, never had kids and uh, he meets some other chick, she's younger, he falls in love with her. When I say I love with her, I was, I was in love with her, right? I couldn't love her in the way I love, loved my wife for 24 years. Uh, his wife finds out and she ends up killing the mistress and then killed herself. It was Janair. Then I screamed and ran to her and I just said to her, oh, baby, oh, baby, what have you done? What have you done? And uh, fucking crazy story. And uh, the husband tells the story and I have to tell you this. Me and my wife watched this, and we were just like, I do not believe a fucking word that is coming out of this guy's mouth. Not a fucking word. The guy was like, I don't know. It was like, he had, he was he was basically doing this show because he was promoting his book. Mark says he's trying to process this tragedy by writing a book. And he was in the reenactments. You know, with the part where he's like, he's now, you know, now that they're both dead and gone, he's packed up all of his stuff and they're showing him driving off in a convertible like fucking Bill Bixby at the end of the Hulk. And um, I don't know. I was just sitting there going like uh, this guy. I don't know. I don't know. There's just something. It's just and I noticed when I watched it. Like the other chick, his mistress also was married. Meredith was also married. The husband of her wasn't on it. None of this guy's family members, the, the husband, none of his family members were there. Like, this is how I, you know, whenever you have, like, those fucking things, like, when they'll be, like, they'll do, like, a documentary. The true Hollywood blah, blah, blah of whatever famous person. Um, The second you don't see a bunch of famous people in there talking about it, you're just like, all right, this is just a bunch of trash. And they'll be like... uh, you know, Dick Cavett's mailman. You know, Dick's a really interesting guy. It's like, who the fuck are you? So, yeah, there was a lot of people that I felt like should have been in that documentary and were not. And it was just sort of him. And I kept calling him the nudger because he had this way of like, he, he would be sincere and then he would just float out a little bit of information. Here's this woman who I think is amazing, saying that she thinks I'm a wonderful man. She'd only known you for a few weeks, though. Fair point. She'd only known me for a couple weeks. So it'd be like, so you'd do the math. Oh, well, one plus one equals two. He just, he wouldn't tell you what to think, but he'd nudge you. 
He was just like, you know, I was like introverted and blah, blah, blah. And then I met her and she was like outgoing and really like rebellious. I was quiet, shy. In contrast, Janir, she was the rebel in a leather jacket. And said whatever she wanted to say and she was complete opposite of me. Said whatever she wanted to say all the time. And she didn't care what anybody else thought of her, which is the exact opposite of me. And, you know, always had to get the last word in an argument and beautiful hair, but, but buried that in the middle. Always had to get the last word in the argument. You didn't win an argument with Janir. She was always going to have the last word. And then you're like, oh, and that's why she killed the day and then shot herself. So... He would have to live with the guilt. Well, there, there we go. There, I, I, you, and you, and you think that you're the one putting it together, and then after a while, you're like, "Wait a minute, wait a fucking minute." So I don't know what the fuck happened in that one. I actually had a buddy of mine who's a lawyer who does criminal shit. I'm like, you know, trials and stuff. And can you watch this thing and tell me what you think? And he goes, ah, "I mean, I think that's kind of what happened." He kind of went along with it. And I was like, well, he's on a book tour. He's doing Dr. Oz. And he goes, hey, well, you know, he said the proceeds of the book is going to charity. I, did he say 100 percent? Or did he just say the proceeds? Fine print, some of the proceeds. I don't know. Have you forgiven Janair? I have forgiven Janair for what she did to me. And I have yet to forgive her for what she did to Meredith. All right, fellow babies, and now it's time to go to our live remote man on the scene at the Pinedale Shopping Mall for the big WKRP turkey giveaway. So anyway, this is how it works. Turkeys can't fly, as that radio station learned. You must have heard that one from way back in the day. Mm -hmm. They had that promotion for people who never heard it. This radio station in America had a promotion that they were going to drop live turkeys from a helicopter down to people. It's a helicopter, and it's coming this way. A helicopter? It's flying something behind it. I can't quite make it out. It's a large banner, and it says, uh, Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> they were going to fly down in celebration of Thanksgiving, and, you know, as much as they knew about radio, they didn't know that turkeys couldn't fly. Oh, my God, they're turkeys! Oh, Johnny, can you get this? Oh, they're crashing to the earth right in front of us. And they just dropped them to their deaths. Oh, my God. What? <laughs> they did. It was an episode on WKRP. More fucking crimes of humanity. <laughs> yeah, we're the worst. WKRP in Cincinnati, one of my favorite sitcoms growing up. Yeah. Baby, if you ever wondered, wondered whatever became of me. I'm living on the air in Cincinnati. Cincinnati WKRP Been packing and unpacking it uh, Something town to town Up and down the dial Maybe you and me were never meant to be But baby think of me once in a while I'm at WKRP in Cincinnati <laughs> And there's another trivia thing about that. The end song. Yeah. Where you can't understand a word the guy's saying, where he's like, Back to the bar, and a bip bop, bip bop, and yeah. Back to the bar, get a bop, and a bop, and a bop, and a bop, and a that he was just fucking around in the studio, mm -hmm. just sort of riffing as mm -hmm. they were putting the song together, and they thought it sounded cool, and they just kept it. There you go. There you go. Now, can we get when back to the... Show? When was that show made? Oh. Uh, was I even alive? Howard Hessman, Lonnie Anderson, the chick who played Bailey, Gordon Jump, Frank Bonner. I've heard of Lonnie Anderson. What, does that make everybody else? <laughs> Irrelevant in my eyes, yes. No, no, of course not. But was that a 70s show or an 80s show? Both. Oh, okay. Late 70s into the early. Oh, Les okay. Nessman, Herb Tarlick. Andy Travis, Venus Flytrap, uh, stand-up comedian, um, just went blank on his name. Uh, Howard Hesman playing... Uh, Venus Flytrap? Venus Flytrap was his DJ name, and then it was Dr. Jo <laughs> Dr. Johnny Fever. As God is my witness, I thought turkeys could fly. <laughs> Thank you.
Mm-hmm. Oh, you watch The Wire? Oh, yeah. Of course. Um, so it's great acting the whole way through, except that one lesbian chick. Oh, you don't like her? She was just off a bunch in her acting. You just tell she was like delivering lines. Really? Yeah. Maybe it's just wow, when I got high. I thought high. she was amazing. Really? Yeah. Fuck. I felt like, like over and over again, I could just see through it. Nah, man. That scene when she's buying the chainsaw or something. What and is she that? gives the guy the tip or something. No, man. You go ahead and handle that for me, man. And keep the rest for your time. This is $800. So what, man? You earned that bump like a motherfucker, man. Keep that shit. She goes in to buy something in a hardware store. The cop? The female cop? No, no, she's not a cop. What? Oh, wait, 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 what? You, you, you don't mean, I'm talking, about the, you, I'm talking about the girl who actually killed somebody. Oh, no, she's badass. The yeah. girl's just, I was going to say, wow, man. Oh, uh, brutal. Yeah. What, did she make that noise? <laughs> she's yeah, like, ER? Yeah. yeah. I don't know what <laughs> no, it no. was. She was fucking sweet. <laughs> okay. That girl was amazing. Scooby? Right. What was her name on that show? Something like that. I was one of those, I, uh... As they call it in the business, I binge watched. I bought I bought the the the, the, the box set, and then I just blew through. Oh them. yeah, and it was I almost felt bad doing it, like chugging a great bottle of wine, you know. I did that with Sopranos, and then I realized like uh, I'm not getting the same level of enjoyment out of this that I could. Yeah, because it's all about like talking about it and trying to guess yeah. which way it's going to go. But uh, it'd be interesting to see if if people who have addictive personalities are more more gluttonous. Like fat people, if they're more if they're more yeah. prone to, to just binge watching. binge watching, like if, if it, <laughs> trying to get a whole series if it, done, if it tra- crosses over from you know food and alcohol and those other addictions into that type of shit, you know. Yeah, I bet it would. I bet it would. But that les the, the female cop chick. Sometimes with her, I could see through it, and I felt like I was getting scammed. Oh really? Yeah. So that's how I feel when I'm watching wow, the elections dude. too. When the debates, I'm like, I thought you- she was good. Yeah. No, all right. You know, I, I really didn't think there was anything. But if you were to say her girlfriend, now yeah. I'd be like, all right, well, you know, she kind of was dipping in and out of the show. <laughs> wow. The girlfriend came in The only person I've to- ever heard said they watched The Wire and they felt like they were getting scammed on some level. <laughs> really? I actually respect that on some level. You're really like... Uh, it was a great show. Don't get me wrong. You're going all I out here. It. I loved it. You're going it. all out. Well, you know what? It's about time somebody trashed it because it comes an armored car. It's about time somebody trashed it. Mama, hey, look, Sam. You look good, Gib. The sport this time is peewee hockey, and here's a scene early on where the coach, Emilio Estevez, a wheeler dealer lawyer, forced to do community service, meets the not so mighty Ducks, a standard assortment of kid stereotypes, including a jive talking black kid. All right, this is the deal. Um,. I don't know how old you are, but do you remember The Mighty Ducks was a movie? It was a Disney movie starring Emilio Estevez, Estevez, however the fuck you say his name. And it was a kid movie. It was basically the Bad News Bears on ice. Hey, Yankees! You can take your crappy trophies and show them right up your asses. Nice. See you next year, bitches! Which is, was, ba- I mean... The worst fucking collection of kids. Emilio Estevez probably had relationship problems. And he learned a lot about himself while working with the kids. And then for some reason, there's this unbelievable hottie who's really into the fucking kids. And sees something in him that he didn't know happened. And then they hook up. And then somewhere along the line, they have a big fight. And then he has to get her back. And meanwhile, there's some big hockey game and uh, I imagine the coach of the other team, Emilio Estevez, already fucking knows on some level. Gordon? Gordon Bombay. Coach Riley. We're both adults now. Why don't you just call me Jack? Hey. Come back to see your old coach, huh? And that dude always wins in life, and now this is his chance. You know what? I bet the coach from the other team is dating that hot girl. And then they hook up. Is that how it works? Is that how the movie was? I, I could never watch it because by the time it came out, I was like fucking 25 years old. Yes, I'm that fucking old. So anyways, yeah, the team. So the movie was evidently a big hit. They made like two or three of them. And along the way, Disney bought a hockey team. And because of the corporate cunt mentality, they named it the Mighty Ducks. Okay. Oh, and uh, while you're knocking around in there, get her to love the films of Emilio Estevez. 
How great is that guy? He's a sheen, he's from an acting dynasty, yet he chooses to be Mexican. Makes it huge, realizes people have had enough of him, and is decent enough to fall off the face of the earth. Emilio! That's good, come on, right. come on, let's make fun of her. Okay, Hank, I'm sorry. No, no, in more. fact, why don't you just laugh in my face? I mean, you might as well do it now, you and Artie do it every time I turn my back. That is not true, Hank. Like, you know who I got the, one of the most out of, out of anybody, as far as comedic acting goes? Uh, Joe De Rosa, not not Joe De Rosa. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Joe De Rosa, no. Joe texts me today saying he was watching, uh, binge watching Larry Sanders. Oh, and yeah. dude, Jeffrey Tambor. Ooh, Jeffrey fucking Tambor is one of the greatest comedic actors in the history of anything. Anything. That fucking guy. That scene. When he goes in, he confronts Larry, and he basically he's in his office, and he fucking tells him that he's sick of being the fucking the boob, the dunce on the shelf. That's the kind of shit I'm talking about. I'm not going to take it anymore. W will you let me explain? No, I won't. It's too late, my friend. I'm tired. I'm tired of uh, being your personal village idiot. And he wants to be treated with respect and Gary's like listening to him acting like he's really taking him in and the for the first time seeing him as a peer and he gets through it he's pouring his fucking heart out it hurts yeah no you don't understand it hurts me all right and then all of a sudden you hear rip torn laugh <laughs> And you realize that the entire time Larry had put Rip Torn's character on the speaker to listen to Jeffrey Tambor's character pour his hat out so they could laugh about it later. There's a speakerphone. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. <laughs> nice try. Now someone's listening to our conversation on the speakerphone. You think someone's on the speakerphone? Someone on the speakerphone? And he was like up here defending the fact that when Wynota Judd came on the show, he introduced her as the Judd. She was half the Judds! Now there's just one of them. So she's a, she is a Judd. She is a single Judd. Right? And he was at the peak going like, they were the Judd. She's a Judd. And he was fucking screaming, defending himself. And then... You hear Rip Torn clears his throat or something, and then Larry, Gary Shandling has a look on his face like, oh, fuck, he knows. And he brings all of his emotions back down, and he has this look of pain on his face and looks Larry right in the eye, and he just goes, see, that's what I'm talking about. And you almost like, I almost, my heart almost broke for him. Yeah. And then, then when he does that performance, dude, he's, he's fucking flailing his arms around so much that his watch literally comes undone. And you know that's not a choice. Yeah. And he stayed in and he fucking pops it back on. Dude, that guy is a fucking beast. He worked beast. with Al Madrigal, I think. Yeah, and that guy, you know what? And what I learned from him when I watched that scene, that scene is everything you ever need to know, I think, as an actor. Like, like he is not trying to be funny. He fucking believes every fucking thing he's saying. And that's why it's so, it's so goddamn funny and heartbreaking at the same time, which, and when you could do that, to me, that's Richard Pryor level shit. Artie, what are you doing on the speakerphone? Oh, are you there with Hank? Artie, I'm sitting right here with Hank in my office. How did you get on the phone? I don't know. I, I have no idea how I got on the phone. I was eating a sandwich in my office. Suddenly, I heard you guys. Yeah, so I watched that movie, Lost Bullet. And then I'm also really big on renting movies on YouTube. They got a lot of good fucking movies on there. Um, I kinda, I'm trying to find some obscure, like, um, early 70s movies that are good. You know, like the Friends of uh, whatever the fuck that movie was that I watched that I loved, Eddie Coyle. 
unbelievable movie. Um, and then I saw, uh, I'm trying to think of some other ones. I just watched a couple of car movies. I literally watched a movie called The Car with James Brolin, um, Josh Brolin's dad, I believe, uh, Ronnie Cox, who played Bogomil in um, the Beverly Hills Cop series. Uh, I just watched that movie, you know. <laughs> it's just interesting. The uh, I got to post one of the lines. I'll, I'll post the clip. It's basically a car that's going around killing people in this small town. And it kills, you know, it kills so many fucking people. You'd think that they would get, you know, they would turn to like the feds or maybe try to get the army to come in there to stop this fucking car. But they don't. These uh, cops in the middle of nowhere, they just try and stop this goddamn car. And uh, (laughs) they get mad at the car and all these people are yelling at it. For whatever reason, out of nowhere, this chick just yells out as the car is driving away. She just yells out, cat. And I would put that line right up there with one of my favorite bad lines in a script that an actor just gave gave it their all is uh, a great movie uh, called Over the Edge. I've talked about this before. The kids take over the school. They lock the parents in like the, uh, the little auditorium. And they start trashing the school and the local cops trying to get, you know, they pulled the gates, locked them, and they're trying to get out of there, you know. And the kids are vandalizing the school, right? I I bet if I watched it now, now that I'm older, I'd be like, these goddamn punk kids, these parents need to get them in order. But when I was a kid, I liked it. Like, yeah, man, trash the school, fucking trying to teach us for free. Um, This woman grabs a giant globe, and as she's running past the auditorium, the cops on the other side of the gate and she stops and she looks at him and she's holding the globe and she just goes, eat it, you stinking pig. Eat it, you stinking pig. <laughs> I don't know what that means other than they were trying to stay with the PG rating. Um, but whatever, I'm making fun of that movie a little bit. I will tell you... Uh, if anybody can find out where that shot, because there's an opening scene where there two people are riding a bicycle through this this um, this tunnel and like uh, looks like the s- southwest of this country. It's fucking gorgeous. Um, and then of course some fucking shit happens after that. But it's it's a cool movie, man. If you're just in like a silly mood, you want to watch something. Then it's also cool seeing Josh Brolin's dad. Josh Brolin's one of the coolest fucking actors ever. And you see his dad, you're like, ah, that's where he got it. That's where he got that swagger. Um, And also, what I can't understand is whenever they do a movie about the 70s, like now, they never can do the hair right. Like, if you look at, like, James Brolin's hair with the stash, it's like, that's the dude. That's the fucking Marlboro man. That's the guy everybody wanted to be in the 70s, and that's the fucking haircut. That's what you wanted to look like. It's right there on film. I know maybe when people get cast, they don't have time to grow it out, but it always just looks like they're wearing stupid wigs. Um, but anyway, some cool cars in there, some Plymouth Furies, uh, motorcycles and shit. 10 speed bikes from back in the day. I'm a ch- really am a child of the 70s and then my music is from the 80s. And um I just been having a great time. There's a couple of uh, Burt Reynolds movies I want to check out too. So that's what I've been doing on the road. Good clean fun. Hey, you know what I watched the other day? I watched an episode of TJ fucking Hooker. The, I will tell you this right now. The funniest running you will ever see in your life by William Shatner and his fucking partner. Um, all they do is they're, they're constant. They, they always have like a fucking wide shot and they, they show TJ Hooker running like it, he runs for like six seconds every shot. It's like, why? I would... I, you know what it is? Is they had to they had to fucking do an hour's twenty two or I forget what a full season was back then, but like twenty two episodes of an hour long show. That's twenty two hours of television. 
Well, actually, with the uh, with the commercials, eight minutes per half hour, forty four minutes. They had to write forty four minutes of fucking shit times twenty two. I mean, it's it, it's like well, we came up short again. Well, just have William Shatner run a little longer. Can T.J. Hooker like run half the length of a football field before he catches up to somebody a third of his fucking age? <laughs> I saw the one. Uh, I got to get this actor's name. Um, he was one. Of, he was one of my uh, one of my favorite actors when I was growing up. He was in Colors. He was a Latino dude. He got hit by a drunk driver. Unfortunately, he was like thirty seven to 30, 38 years old. Hang on, I got to get this guy's name. Uh, let's see, Colors, IMDb. I didn't know Don Cheadle was in that movie. I got to watch that again. That'd be one of his earliest ones. I am a nightmare walking. I am a nightmare walking. Psychopath talking. King of my jungle, just the gangster stalking. Um, it's something Silva, I believe. Trinidad Silva. So he was in this episode of um, this episode of uh, T.J. Hooker, and it was fucking hilarious because all of a sudden T.J. Hooker, when he's talking to him, would throw in some fucking Latino words, and it was only like shit. That like uh, let white people know. Play games on my turf. You'll wish you were back there, Flendo. Like que pasa, fucking agua. He said at one point, well maybe if you stop acting like a polo. Are you crazy, hooker? You almost killed us, man. That was polla like you in the car. Wasn't even close. Like he, he threw in like chicken, and it's just like yeah, that's because the writing staff ordered El Polo Loco that day. <laughs> but Trinidad Silva, I believe he was in the Jerk. Um, I think he was in it. Well, you know what? When I look up his fucking, this guy was amazing. He was in Hill Street Blues. He was in The Jerk. Yeah, he actually died during the filming of an uh, underrated movie by Weird Al Yankovic called UHF. Uh, he was in Colors. Uh, yeah, Hill Street Blues. Stir Crazy. He had such, I mean, he died so young. He, he was on Barney Miller. I mean, this guy, Lou Grant, The White Shadow, The Jerk. This guy's IMDb page, Beretta. You know, granted, he probably played a perp in all of those fucking things. He was probably fixing games on the white shadow. That's the way it was back then. And this guy somehow got through it and opened the doors for a bunch of other people. I hadn't seen him in a while. It was great to see him. Trinidad Silva, look him up. Uh, 1950 to 1988. Unfortunately, he was, uh, he was only 38 years old. Jesus Christ. Um, phenomenal actor, though. Today, we're teaching poodles how to fly. Come here. Come here, Fuffy. Ah, Fuffy. Are you psyched? Are you ready? Okay. Here we go. Get ready and fly! Oh, man.